Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. So, am I audible? Anybody can? Yeah, good. So, today, uh, our uh, next speaker, Professor uh, Prabhuja Ganguly, he was not available today. So, from the next lecture, he will be there. Uh, today, I will be uh, continuing with the data analysis. What we have learned uh, last lecture, uh, where we discussed uh, how the standard error will decrease as we take more and more measurements that we, uh, we saw last time. Today, we are going to uh, uh, see some more, I know, surprising results. It will be interesting to know. Uh, normally, when you have combined n measurements, like suppose uh, x1, xn together, in order to obtain average, so you, you know, n measurements, to, uh, then to, they will get an average. This n average will almost always it will be somewhat different from the true mean value. Suppose you have a uh, population uh, with the mean mu and the standard deviation. Deviation is equal to sigma. But when you uh, take combined n measurements and get an average, then uh, what you will do, your average will be one to n xi divided by this is your average and the, and the uncertainty in x bar is sigma by you see it is not uh, sigma you, uh, you know your population has a, a standard deviation sigma but when you make a sample measurement at that time your uh, uncertainty in uh, x bar is sigma by root n. This is what uh, we learned uh, last time. But the most interesting thing is this. As n becomes large, the probability of taking a measurement and finding some particular value of uh, uh, x bar. Suppose there is a population, uh, you, you take a, a large number of uh, measurements, and take average, then uh, uh, the probability of uh, finding some particular value of x bar is precisely follow such a distribution. Let me write down, then I will tell you. This, this part is very important. This should be e to the power minus x bar minus n. Plus four, okay. This divided by by Yeah, suppose you are making some uh, measurement uh, as a sample and finding x bar, the probability of taking a, a you know a particular value of x bar will always be in a Gaussian, uh, follow a Gaussian distribution. 
This curve is called Gaussian or normal or bell shaped. This, this is important. And this is what is called central limit theorem. Okay, this, this is very important because when you make measurements, your probability of getting particular X bar will follow such a distribution. In this case, you see, in a, in a sample, your uh, width, in this case, your width is sigma by root n rather than sigma. The uh, population sigma was uh, here, it was uh, standard deviation was sigma, but when it comes to measurement, your sample sigma is uh, standard error or standard deviation is sigma by root error. So similarly, then what we learn from this, uh, like all continuous uh, probability distributions, px dx bar gives the likelihood that x bar will lie in the range x bar and x bar of, of dx bar. Okay. So this is a, you know, like all probability distribution, px dx is basically gives the likelihood that your x bar will lie in the range x bar and x bar plus dx. Then, you know, this particular equation, what we uh, are learning is, gives the likelihood of measuring every possible value or a sample mean. Suppose, uh, you have a population and you are taking different sample measurement and this gives the likelihood of measuring every possible value of uh, this result is a, will be particularly interesting and uh, you say extraordinary uh, result because the Gaussian probability of measuring different value of x bar is correct no matter what the original probability p of the measuring variables xi may have been. This is this is very important. Uh, the, you always get uh, your mean value a Gaussian probability distribution no matter what the original probability uh, p of the measuring variable that suppose your uh, population distribution may be of any shape but when you measure the mean suppose you have a population distribution having particular mean and uh, standard deviation sigma and your uh, population may have any shape but when you measure the mean, then that uh, uh, distribution will be always a Russia. So let me make some figure and explain. Suppose I have a this is a Russian distribution. Suppose I have one uh, uh, distribution, Px is like this.
normal distribution. So, normal. And I will take another one. Same pH. This is like a seed, say double potassium. This is one, this is minus one. And I will take a third. Sorry. Suppose it's a skewed one. So I start with, I have, uh, this is QX. This is a, is very skewed. This one has uh, uh, PX has two X. But then what I will do, I will make a measurement. So this measurement, if I uh, take only two samples, they will follow some sort of a question. But this one will be something like, you know, This will be more like you know, like skin. This for if I take uh, two samples, because uh, it's uh, more sample will be suppose then I go to eight samples, the figure will be. This will be more or less a sharp question, and this one will be. So I will do something like this. And if I go for uh, 32 samples, this will be interesting. All will be normal distribution. So in you know uh, in you know life science when they study samples they always take uh, thirty samples. That is because by the time you reach around thirty two, whatever maybe your uh, initial uh, probability distribution or population distribution, but when you measure the mean distribution, it is always a question. So. Uh, 30 and above is always taken uh, for any uh, measurement. You know, life science, when they do, uh, they take uh, at least 30 samples to get any conclusion. So that uh, 30 data point, uh, you know, or in this case, 32 uh, data points is enough to ensure that the result is normally distributed. So this is very, you know, uh, extraordinary uh, result which says that whatever may be your initial population distribution but when you get uh, measure the mean distribution they will be always like that because we are this will be very useful for a certain of our our, our analysis so now we will use this uh, normal distribution. Let us see. We will just once you know 
that the probability of measuring a sample mean is given by a normal distribution, you can use this knowledge to test hypothesis. We will see what is hypothesis and find out precisely likelihood your result came about by chance. This will help us to test the hypothesis. Particularly this hypothesis test is done when we are doing, uh, you know, life science uh, research. There, uh, you can precisely uh, find out whether this has come due to some effect or it is by chance also, it, we can get, we'll see that with example also. To do, the, do this, uh, to simplify the calculations, the arguments in the normal distribution, we can now replace the argument in the normal distribution. Z is equal to X bar minus mu divided by delta X. We could replace this in the earlier or the first equation I wrote. You can interpret uh, uh, in this case Z as the difference between your uh, sample mean and, and the true measure in the unit of standard errors because this is suppose you are true and your sample mean is this. So Z is basically uh, representing the difference in the units of standard error. When Z is uh, uh, much larger than 1, the sample mean differs much more from the true mean. No, then you know, no. when Z is uh, much less, then chance can easily explain the difference. You know, if we, this di uh, difference because it's a unit of uh, uh, your uh, error, sample error. Suppose uh, sample error means basically your uh, uh, sigma. So if it is more than one, then your difference is in the Gaussian curve. It's uh, more than one sigma. If it is uh, less than one, then uh, uh, you, know, you can say that chance can, uh, I can easily explain the difference. So if I rewrite the distribution, it will be probability distribution of Z is equal to 1 by 2 pi to Equal minus Z square. So we have a okay, plot of this. So sorry. not below x-axis. Since the normal distribution Ez, suppose this is 2, this is minus 2. Since the normal distribution Ez, the probability distribution, the area under the curve gives the probability, right? Suppose I will take uh, one sigma. And then the three angles. Why it goes back?
then uh, suppose this is basically pro probability. Suppose I ask uh, that we plot, then we'll discuss. Z, Z1. That is equal to two. You see, two thirty, two thirty probability dash. So one uh, one can ask what fraction of the total probability uh, probability lies in the interval minus one or uh, minus one to plus one. So this will be six, 68 percent. Point sixty eight. So if I take this, this will be point, point sixty eight percent. Then if I say between two uh, uh, minus two to plus two, then it will be. Will be 95 percent. So beyond uh, two sigma, uh, that means the z value two, only you have uh, five percent of the time by chance alone it will lie outside this interval. So only five percent time this is this and this will be only five percent. Can you get more? That's how you can do it. Okay. You know, you see, only 5% time the value can be more than 2 minus plus minus 2. With this, uh, uh, now we will try to uh, do what is called uh, jet test and uh, also. In, Try to understand what is the probability. Z test. Now we can use this uh, information uh, to uh, for the hypothesis testing. Interpretation of the you will see now how this curve, what we discuss, but uh, the area under the curve we used in practice. This is used in hypothesis test, uh, testing, that's what I told earlier. This is used in. Yes. What is the hypothesis? Hypothesis is a you know the statement. Let me write a hypothesis must must be one independent. And variable and at least 
one. Dependent. And the dependent variable is what we will measure. And uh, we will measure the dependent variable. And you may not be uh, sure if it will change the, uh, the dependent variable. Because uh, if there is a change in independent variable, whether it will change the uh, dependent variable uh, or not. The point of the experiment may be to determine if it does or does not change. So that's your, uh, this is the hypothesis, uh, 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 hypo uh, hypothesis testing. Effect of, uh, suppose effect of uh, fertilizer dose on tomato size. You want to study that, that means dose uh, is your independent variable and the dependent variable is the tomato size. That is, uh, one can see various doses of uh, fertilizer. It is really helping uh, to increase the size of tomato or not. Once you have settled on an independent variable, so whatever you want to do, you can state a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is usually that changes in the independent variable will not lead to any significant changes in the dependent variable. So there is two types of hypothesis. Once you have settled with your independent variable, then you can write a null hypothesis. Let me state that the null. All hypothesis is usually that changes in and then dependent variable will not not lead to any significant changes changes Very good. So, uh, suppose uh, you want to study size of uh, tomato with a dose of uh, fertilizer, your null hypothesis will be there will not be any change with a dose of the, uh, there will not be any change of uh, size of tomato, uh, tomatoes with a various doses of fertilizer. That is what will be uh, your, uh, that is called the null hypothesis. The hypothesis that, uh, uh, the hypothesis that, that changing, changing the Independent variable or independent variable does change the dependent. Variable is called alternate hypothesis. So you have two types uh, of uh, hypothesis. One is called uh, null hypothesis, and then other one is called 
alternate hypothesis. In normal hypothesis, you state that there is no change. Uh, uh, when there is a change in the independent variable, there is no change, significant changes in dependent variable. That is a null hypothesis. Uh, but the alternate hypothesis is changing the independent variable does change the dependent variable. That is called alternate uh, hypothesis. Uh, so suppose you are uh, gathering data and want to uh, test the null hypothesis that the data come from a distribution with a mean new in the standard deviation sigma. What do you will do? You take n samples and put the Suppose you are, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, you are taking null hypothesis that uh, data come from a distribution with mean mu and standard deviations. So, what you will do? You will take uh, uh, n samples, compute the sample mean and standard deviation or uh, standard error sigma by n do that is called delta x and finally you will calculate the z z will be x bar minus mu by okay, these three things you uh, there is a, a conventional rule that you can reject the null hypothesis if the value you found could have variety by chance only 5%. So that means when you have a uh, z distribution curve, so uh, this is one sigma, two sigma. I was to one. Suppose you do, uh, uh, there is a distribution, you can be new and with sigma. But when you took the sample, you got a uh, you have average value x average and uh, sigma delta x. Then you define z. And if z is coming, 95% is basically corresponding to z value is equal to 1.96 to be precise. This means that uh, area under the normal curve where z is, uh, z is uh, less than 1.96 are very close to 2 and greater than uh, plus 2 is only 5 percent. Then what you have to do? You look at the value of z you have obtained and compare it with 1.96. Once you get the z value, you see what is the, how much is the, this, z, this z value. And if your z value is less than 1.96, suppose it is z value is somewhere here, or greater than uh, uh, you know one point or two, let us say uh, greater than two or less than uh, minus two, but then say that uh, I uh, reject the null hypothesis because null hypothesis uh, uh, is telling that uh, you should have got a mean value very close to is a same as this your sample mean is same as this but in this case only five percent chance that you will get a, a value which is more than uh, 
1.96 and or more, only 5% chance of them. So in that uh, case, you say the null hypothesis is wrong because it is not from the same distribution as uh, we have assumed because uh, your uh, X bar is differing a, a lot from the population B that is new, it is differing a lot. So what do you understood that if a uh, large Z means reject the null hypothesis. If your Z is large, you reject the null hypothesis. When uh, Z is large, your P value, P value means uh, beyond plus minus Z, whatever probability is there. And that probability is only 5%. And 5% is taken the criteria. If it is uh, less than equal to 5%, then you say your null hypothesis is uh, you know, rejected. So small p means they reject the null hypothesis. And a large z means a large z or small p that will uh, reject the null hypothesis. So you will, you will take a real uh, example and uh, then maybe it will be uh, understandable better. Let us take an example. Uh, we'll see the, uh, uh, the fairness. So we'll take a, a toss, uh, we'll take 100. Uh, Please, of a coin, and we will see. We will ask if the coin is fair or not. We will take hundred flips of a coin, and we will see if the if the if the coin is fair. So, uh, the true mean of, of a coin flip is is point five, because you say uh, head is say one, tail is zero, and only two possibilities. So your mean will be half into. So that is going to point out. So if it is fair, then your mean will be 0.5. Similarly, you can calculate uh, sigma also. Sigma for a fair coin, uh, it will be that means fair coin means if you have tossed this uh, really large number of times, it will be half. Uh, So your mean is half. Yeah. So this uh, this will be. So if coin is pair, this is the uh, mu and this is the sigma. Suppose we will talk 100 uh, times and we got the mean value x bar is equal to 0.46, let us say. The mean we got 0.46 instead of 0.5. Then you see whether this uh, uh, this measurement is, a, is due to a fair coin or, or it is a biased one. And then uh, our uh, delta x uncertainty will be this sigma 
सिग्मा बाय जीरो ओके देन यू कैलकुलेट द जेड जेड विल बी पॉइंट फोर सिक्स माइनस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय जीरो पॉइंट फाइव जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव इट्स इन डेल्टा एक्स इसी एक्स बार माइनस न्यू डिवाइडेड बाय डेल्टा एक्स तो डेट इज़ वर्ड में This value is coming out to be zero point eight. In a uh, normal distribution, I think there are tables. Uh, you can see the normal distribution. So suppose. Uh, जेड वैल्यू पॉइंट एट जेड वैल्यू जीरो जीरो सपोज जेड वैल्यू वन सपोज जीरो पॉइंट एट यू पुट एक पॉइंट एट माइनस पॉइंट एट तो प्लस पॉइंट एट इस Area here, and uh, any value beyond this area is basically one minus this one. Z value area between Z minus or minus point minus point eight to plus point eight. That will be in the book. Uh, okay, there are uh, tables available to find out p value. That is coming out to be zero point four two. Sorry, uh, I could have given you that table in a normal curve. There are point uh, eight sigma beyond the area will be point four two. What it says? So if the coin is fair. Forty-two percent of the time, Z would differ from zero as much as it does here, or more. Since this degree of deviation, ah, uh, that means suppose you are getting a value point eight. Point eight means you know forty-two percent time, just by chance, because it's a probability distribution by chance. You can get a value of 0.8 or more than that. So that means uh, we have uh, set a condition that uh, null hypothesis you can only reject if your probability is a, I don't know, five percent, five percent or less. But here we are getting 42 percent of times you can get a value of 0.8 or more. So you cannot. There is no reason you can reject the null hypothesis. So null hypothesis says that uh, it's a fine is fair. So your null hypothesis is valid. So H two. So we will do uh, maybe subsequent lectures more uh, problems uh, on this. How to say more problems on uh, how to say so this is what uh, is known as the Z test because you are defining Z and then uh, you, are, you are finding out the average and then. Uh, average, you know the what is the uh, population mean, and uh, whatever mean you have got, uh, you are defining in terms of z, 
and then you see on the normal distribution where this ZZ falls. Depending on that, you can say your you can test your uh, hypothesis is uh, rejected or accepted. Your or your uh, null hypothesis valid or your uh, uh, alternate hypothesis is valid. So there is a uh, another test. In this case, you know you know the uh, mean and uh, standard deviation of the population. But in uh, certain cases, you don't know the standard deviation of the population, particularly the sigma you don't know. In that case, you have to define, uh, define another variable, what is called, uh, instead of z-test, that is called t-test. So this is very similar to uh, z-test, but you define t as uh, x bar minus mu divided by because usually you write sigma by uh, root n but uh, you, you don't know sigma so what you have to do whatever you are getting your sample uh, um, standard deviation you write sample standard deviation divided by this is a standard error error is the sample uh, it is not uh, you know sigma because sigma you don't know so you use uh, standard deviation of the sample divided by root n. Of this you can write x zero divided by that. But here uh, one uh, important thing is that when you calculate this standard deviation, there you get the n minus one uh, at all. So this is what is known as the degree of freedom. So it now depends on the degree of uh, freedom. So uh, when you calculate, uh, you know, when you don't know the original sigma, then uh, there is another table which uh, uh, says the uh, p values, just like if your uh, z values, the p value will, will be defined and it will depend on the degree of freedom also. So uh, you, you can also do your uh, hypothesis uh, testing using uh, p-test if your uh, sigma is not uh, known. Uh, so it differs from z-test. You do not know the standard deviation sigma in advance. So because you have to convert from a sample. The probability that your result occurred by chance, uh, now your uh, probability of your result uh, occurred by chance depending on the uh, degree of freedom because if you have more degree of freedom then your uh, uh, t value will be uh, will change so accordingly you know your uh, your s will change so that your t value will change so that means width also width of the distribution will change so uh, if you in that case you know, accordingly you have to take care of uh, degree of freedom this is the case when uh, one of the, uh, you know, your population standard deviation is not known. In some cases, uh, you, you need to compare also uh, data with many values of independent variables. There are uh, situations where So I told you one thing is called jet test. Then where you or you have to know the mean and uh, standard deviation, and then you can uh, sample standard deviation and mean you can calculate. This you can calculate. T, uh, t, uh, t test. And uh, there is another uh, test when uh, where uh, you have uh, many means with uncertainties. Suppose you have uh, many means with uncertainty, and then uh, you you also you know you you can uh, you have certain theory which predicts that each of these uh, means should be like this. Like when you we compare 
our experimental data with the some theoretical predictions. We get your experimental result at various energies. And then uh, you have a theoretical uh, prediction. What do I expect? Uh, as a function of, suppose, you measure cross-section as a function of energy. In that case, uh, you have done a measurement and you have certain error bars with the measurement. But you expect from a theory that it should be uh, going like this. Now you have to find out uh, the difference between the theory and the experimental measurement you have carried out. That is whether by chance uh, you will able to explain that or there is a real uh, difference between uh, theory and the experiment. That is what is called the chi square test. A chi square test for uh, means with uncertainty. Chi square test uh, provides a way to compare large number of separate measurements with a theory or with each other. That's what I uh, told. Suppose you have measured the different uh, things. You have measured the different things. And you have got uh, means D1, DD, with uncertainties like, you know, delta Y1, delta Yd. At the same time, you have some uh, expectation or some theoretical prediction what each measurement should be. You have, you have this experimental result with this uh, uh, error bars or uncertainties, and uh, you have certain theory, uh, which uh, you know what is the expected values. As uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the case of, uh, in the case of experiment, and uh, you always uh, uh, and expectations they don't uh, really match. Normally, when you do experiment and uh, your theoretical prediction. Uh, they uh, do not uh, normally uh, agree. So what do you uh, define that way? Chi square is equal to chi is equal to one degree of freedom and i i. This is coming from theory. This is your. This is theory coming. This is from our experiment. Then. Delta Yi square. Broadly speaking, if chi square is a much larger than D1, because every term, suppose this difference between your uh, experiment and theory is uh, comparable to your uncertainty, then each term will give value 1. So if you have uh, D degrees of freedom, then you will get uh, maximum value D. Uh, if your uh, this chi square is uh, uh, larger than d, it is likely that chance alone uh, can explain the deviation between because uh, one means uh, you know it is uh, one sigma. So that you know remaining is thirty two percent beyond the uh, one sigma. So then you can say that chance alone can explain the deviation between y and uh, y i and m uh, y if it is around one otherwise the suppose it is more than uh, one then then you know chance uh, alone uh, may not explain uh, the difference so in that case, you, uh, you can see, uh, see there is a difference between uh, your uh, experiment and uh, expected, what is expected from uh, theory. So we uh, will stop with uh, today. Today, what I taught you, uh, following things we learn. One is a central limit. 
a bit so now then you run the jet test the p test for hypothesis testing this is for uh, and also we learn guys per test okay this uh, today's lecture and uh, yesterday's lecture you will find in uh, onovidya and it is not you can go through if you want and uh, if you have any question you can ask Yeah. So any question? So next lecture will be by Prabhudo uh, Ganguly. We will be uh, talking about intellectual property rights. So next uh, six lectures, you will be hearing from Professor Prabhudo Ganguly. And uh, once again, I must tell you that you will be uh, responsive in the class because every uh, 10, 15 minutes, we will look for a response from you and he will ask you to respond. Unlike, you know, uh, there is some question, okay. Sir, kindly, chi square test is some real. Okay. I think we, if we go through an example, uh, there where chi square test, uh, we can, uh, basically, you have a theoretical prediction and uh, experimented data, or sometimes, you know, you have two different, uh, you know, for same uh, observation, you have two different set of data. Then you want to compare them, whether these two set of data are correct or not. So, uh, normally, if your chi-square, uh, you know, is when is, uh, you know, usually finally you write chi-square as a uh, divided by uh, degree of freedom. Then it should be one. Chi-square divided by degree of freedom. Otherwise, you know, it will be summation if you take the difference in units of, uh, uncertainty it will be uh, d but uh, when you define chi square value we write chi square divided by degree of freedom so if it is uh, you know uh, one uh, then uh, you know it, uh, whatever difference you are getting between your uh, experiment and theory that can be uh, that uh, that can be explained by 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 chance uh, you can get that because because of the uh, statistical uh, nature of the uh, process. But if you are getting uh, value uh, chi square by d more than uh, uh, one, uh, that means suppose uh, more, more than two, suppose you say, then that is uh, the probability uh, is only five percent. That's what we learn. So in that case, we can say that these two set of data they are not the same they are different or uh, yeah, this uh, experimental um, results are not comparing with the uh, theory so this is a very powerful uh, uh, technique this, this is mostly it is used in uh, you know experimental uh, analysis okay i can uh, we can solve some uh, problem next time on this uh, on p test and uh, uh, chi square so that will be uh, whenever you can understand better. Okay, then can you uh, some other question? What, what, what it? Can you explain again how can one interpret the p value? Ah, it is interesting. So you have a uh, Russian, and uh, suppose you take a sigma. Uh, no. 
plus minus uh, sigma. That uh, uh, area under the curve plus minus sigma is basically 68 percent. Because this this, this uh, normal distribution is total area is one, so the area uh, for one sigma plus minus one sigma is sixty eight percent. So any uh, the the probability beyond this that means uh, one sigma beyond you could uh, uh, find out what is the probability probability that means any value suppose you are um, getting within uh, one sigma that means that is a 68% ch chance that you will get uh, values within that sigma. And anything uh, that uh, the probability beyond this, that is called uh, uh, P probability, that is 32%. So, what is uh, said that uh, when you have uh, Z value 2, that means almost 95% probability is contained with a uh, you know, two two sigma, and beyond two sigma is only five percent. They say any uh, any uh, mean value you measure, and when when you are comparing, if it is falling more than one point nine six exactly, or uh, let us uh, roughly take two beyond two sigma, then then you say that they are not the same. There is a difference. If the value is falling within two sigma. Suppose you make two measurements, and one is uh, falling within two sigma. Then that is that is within ninety one percent. Because you know, if you are uh, uh, ninety one percent, uh, you know, you say ninety five percent. Ninety five percent uh, area you it will be covered by two sigma. And uh, anything beyond that is only five percent. It is standard. It is taken that if any value is coming beyond uh, two sigma, you say then uh, in comparing these two uh, values, they are they are not the same. There uh, there is a difference. And when uh, it is within two sigma, you say okay, uh, they are coming from the same process. Can kind you of get Kaiser Cortez to it? Okay. Could please give some reference book for today's lecture? Yeah. So I have a, I will give you a handwritten uh, note, and otherwise, the book I am following is a Michael P. Uh, model. So this book is listed on the research methodology, you know, a reference. You can uh, look and you will find this book. So I can show you otherwise. This is the book I am following. You are able to see? Hmm? Research methods for science by Michael E. Murder. Murder, huh? you can write this. Research methods for science. Methods, huh? This book is uh, listed in the, you know, you can see research methodology syllabus. It is listed there. Michael. Next lecture, we'll do some, uh, uh, I'll talk about uh, some problems on uh, hypothesis testing and also error. How do you calculate error in uh, measurement? Then I will also talk about how to write research paper. So I think two lectures will give on this, and the final lecture will will make an overall discussion, which will help you for writing your exam. So I, I will be taking three more lectures. So one uh, will be on uh, uh, error and few problems on uh, hypothesis testing and uh, literature uh, writing, paper, uh, paper writing. There is another lecture, and the final one will be on. Hmm. Sir, can you give us some problem to solve so that we can understand this? Okay, okay, that's better. Good. Provide some tutor so that our understanding will be ah, very nice. Okay, I will do this. To write exam as well. 
uh, audit course, if you are taking it this as an audit course, then uh, your attendance has to be 75%. In that case, we will give you a certificate that you have attended this course, but you will not get any credit. Okay. Then, uh, can you please provide some? Okay. Okay, I will do this. So, you, uh, whatever lecture, uh, for last two lectures, they, uh, they will upload it in the Anub Vidya, you can uh, look those things. Uh, then, any, any more question? Okay, we'll stop it here today. And then, uh, uh, next uh, six lectures, we will, we will have on intellectual property rights by Professor Prabhuzdo Ganguly, because I am out of uh, Mumbai for a uh, certain time. So, again, I will come back to complete your remaining three lectures. Okay, thank you all.